Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Mac Whisperer Academy. In today's episode, we're gonna talk all about Safari and bookmarks, and how to use bookmarks to get yourself more organized and more productive. I'm Dylan Stewart, they call me the Mac Whisperer, and for the last 20 years, I've made it my passion and my profession to simplify Apple technology and devices so that everybody can get more done in less time and with less effort when using their Apple products properly. So let's go ahead and open up Safari right down here from your dock. When I first open up Safari, I'm greeted by the standard web page. I've got my home page. In my case, I have Google set as my home page. And on the left side, I've got this weird thing with all these bookmarks. It's called the sidebar. And at some point, Apple, in an attempt to get people to use bookmarks in a different way, put the sidebar up as this default. And I personally hate it. So I'm gonna show you how to use bookmarks in a better and a different way. The first thing we're gonna do is let's talk about the sidebar for just a second so that we understand. See it right over here? It's taking up that whole left side of my website. Now there's two separate sections to the sidebar. The first one, which we see right here, is the bookmark section. This is where all of your bookmarks get stored and shown in this laundry list. Then to the right of that, we see what's called the reader list. The reader list is an easy place for you to save an article, a website, a particular story that you're reading online that you would like to read later, potentially when you have no internet connection. By adding things into this reading list, you make it very easy for you to come back to stories and articles that you wanted to read but didn't get around to. But that's not what I wanna focus on for this lesson. The reader list is great. The bookmark list is great. Having it in the sidebar is useless. The first problem happened when Apple changed a setting and made it so that the favorites bar that used to go across the top of Safari is invisible. Not very helpful. Let's go make it visible again by clicking on the view menu at the top here and clicking show favorites bar right there. And just like that, I have all of my bookmarks at the top of the screen instead of using that sidebar on the left. So with that being shown, let's go ahead and hide the sidebar by clicking this button here. Clicking the sidebar button on your toolbar will either slide away the sidebar like this or bring it into view this way. I'm not saying the sidebar is useless. I'm just saying I don't want it up there all the time. I'm not in the midst of my bookmarks so frequently that I really need a third of my website view obscured by a bunch of bookmarks. And it's disorganized and it's just all over the place. So let's go ahead and hide it by clicking the button and that goes away. Now, as you can see across the top, I've got all of these bookmarks here. Before we go further, let's talk about what a good bookmark is and what a not so necessary bookmark is. You know, it used to be that we had to bookmark every page. So if you wanted to go to Amazon, if you wanted to go to Facebook, or if you wanted to go to LinkedIn, you had to bookmark it or you could never find it. But technology's come a long way. Now all I have to do is click in my address bar here and start typing a couple of letters and it'll take me to that website without a bookmark. It's extremely helpful for websites like Amazon that I go to all the time. Instead of having a bookmark I've got to manage, I'm just gonna click the letter A and it immediately goes, oh, you must want Amazon. And if I click the return button on my keyboard, all of a sudden I'm on Amazon, I didn't even need a bookmark. So you don't really need bookmarks for these websites that you visit all the time. I don't really feel the need for a Facebook or a YouTube or a Amazon bookmark or an Apple bookmark. I say bookmarks for websites that are a little more complicated or that I go to frequently, but I go to a specific part of them. So now that we understand a little bit better when we do and we don't need a bookmark, let's talk about how to create a bookmark. There's two really easy ways to do it. The first way, let's go ahead and go to a specific website. In this case, I'm just gonna to go to Facebook. Now from here, if I highlight the address bar on the left side right there, you'll see this plus button. But be careful, don't just click on it because if you do, what you'll end up doing is adding something to the reader list. Let's take a look. I'll open up the sidebar here. And as I click on that plus button, it adds it right to the reader list. That's not what I wanted. Go ahead and close that sidebar off first. The proper way to add bookmarks with this button is to press and hold or right click on them. This will then allow you to put it into a specific place like your favorites bar or your bookmark menu or your miscellaneous folder or something else. Pressing and holding that plus button allows you to choose where you want it to go. 
you can also very easily drag something onto the bookmark bar. Do that by clicking on the website and grabbing this little icon to the left of the address. We call that the handle. By grabbing the handle, I can take it and I can drag it and I can either drop it right on the bar here or inside of my favorites list here or even inside of another folder that I've got. The third way to add a bookmark can either be done by going up to your menu bar at the top where it says bookmarks and clicking add bookmark or by using the key code command D. All of these ways will allow you to create bookmarks so that you can easily get back to a specific website that you're regularly looking into. There are two separate places where your bookmarks will go. The first one is this bar that goes across the top here. That's called your favorites bar. The favorites bar is fantastic because it's always at the top of your Safari, but it's got a flaw. It's finite. It's got to fit within the horizontal length of your Safari window. If it doesn't, you'll end up with these double arrows that you see to the right over here with all of the overflow bookmarks that couldn't fit into that bar. We're going to talk about how to get everything on that bar, but there's a second place that you can put your bookmarks, and that's called the bookmarks menu. You can easily access it by clicking on the bookmarks menu icon at the top here, and you'll see right there, here's my favorites bar, but down here are some of my other bookmarks that are just inside the bookmarks menu. And you might even see within a folder, you might have subfolders that make it easier for you to get to specific pages. So now that we understand what to create bookmarks of, how to create bookmarks, and the two places where you can put bookmarks, Let's talk about what we're really here to learn, how to organize those bookmarks to make it easier and more effective for you to get to all of these websites you're traveling to all the time. The best place to do this organization is by clicking on the bookmark menu here and going to where it says edit bookmarks. This opens up a whole page. Now, from this page, we can see my favorites bar, which is notated by the little star here. And we can also see the other folders that are part of the bookmarks menu, which in this case is the My Kajabi and the Temp and the Miscellaneous and the Admin, separate sections that I use for other kinds of bookmarks. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and open up my favorites bar here, and we're going to see this laundry list of bookmarks. The first thing you want to do is you want to identify bookmarks that have a name that's too long. As you can see across the top here, like this Podbean one here, it can only show a certain amount of letters before it runs out of space. So your very first job is to look through things and see like, here's something called stick PNG. Do I need the www and the .com? I'm just gonna put it in a little bit shorter. Podbean, same example. I don't need this whole thing. I just need to know that it's Podbean. So I can get rid of everything else. You see, every website has a name that comes across the bar at the top, and that's what the bookmarks program saves as their title, which is why I have something here that is computer memory X upgrades, blah, 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 blah. I don't need all that. All I need to know is this is memory X, like that. So your first job is to shorten all the names, all of them, everything that you see there that's too long. As you're doing this, if you come across bookmarks that are old, that are out of date, that you don't need anymore, that you don't use that frequently, just delete them. It's very easy to delete them. Just go ahead and select it from this list like this and click the delete button on your keyboard like that. Poof, easy. So as you're doing this work of shortening the names, do the extra work of deleting the things you don't want. But the next part, is the most important part of this entire lesson. You see, Safari's been around almost 20 years, but most people don't realize you can use folders to organize your bookmarks. Why would that be helpful? Well, one of the problems with a bookmarks list is it can just go on and on and on and on and on, and you can have mixtures. Maybe you've got some work stuff here, and you've got some entertainment stuff here, and you've got some bill stuff there, and everything's convoluted. It's sorted in haphazard way, which is alphabetical. I mean, an alphabetical sort is helpful sometimes, but it assumes that Amazon by being an A is more important to me than Zoom by being a Z. The alphabet is arbitrary. I need to put things in the order that they're the most effective for me. And the first way to do that is to create categories or folders. So let's create a couple of folders right now. I'm in the bookmark edit menu and in the upper right corner, there's new folder. So I'm going to go ahead and click it. We're going to create a first folder. This one is going to be bills. 
Now, just to make this simple, I'm gonna move this folder up to the very top of the list. Why? Because I can now see that folder on my toolbar right there. And everything that I add from top to bottom will go left to right on that bar. So there's bills. Let's go ahead and create another one. The next one is going to be work. I'm gonna use this as kind of a catch-all. I have two separate businesses. So let's create a folder for each of them. The first one is going to be TMW. I know that as an abbreviation of the Mac Whisper. So I can just set that up right like that and click on the work folder and create a new one, which is called the North Star Man. And again, I know what the abbreviation means, so I can just leave it a nice short name like NSM and be fine with that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move that work folder up right under bills and look at how easy it looks. I can click on it and there are the two subfolders. Currently we don't have any bookmarks in them, but that's the first step. Get yourself a couple of basic folders that you can work with. I like bills, I like work, I might like money. I do like money, but in this case, I like money because I've got all sorts of websites that relate to money in that kind of a way. Let's create another one here. Let's create family. This is for anything having to do with my kids that I might need, etc. Now that I've done that, what I can begin to do is I can begin to file all of the things in this list into some of these categories. Now you can do it one at a time. For example, I'm gonna open up the work folder here for easy access to the Mac Whisper, and I'm gonna come and grab this memory X and I'm gonna drop it into the Mac Whisper like that. I can certainly do it one at a time like that, but I can also grab a chunk all together, which you do by holding the command button down on your computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a bunch of these work-related ones that I use here. We'll grab all of those, and I will just take them all at once and drag and drop them right into the Mac Whisper. By doing this, you can very easily create a handful of folders that will allow you to do everything you need to do online. So I'm going to give you a couple of moments to create some folders, to begin to put your bookmarks into these folders, to eliminate bookmarks you just don't need anymore. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and get this bookmark list organized for me. See you in a moment. After just a few minutes, look at how much better that bookmark list looks. It's so clean, it's so easy. Right across the top, I've got all of the separate categories that I need. And all of the ability to go into subcategories as necessary. I can get to any one of my courses with a single click. I can see any of the technical news stories that I read on a regular basis. There's so many things that I can do so much faster by just taking that little bit of time to organize it. But I got one kicker. Sometimes there's a set of websites that you use together regularly. Maybe when you first start your workflow in the morning, you open up your Google page, you open up this calendar, you open up Google Drive or Dropbox or Microsoft or whatever the programs and websites are that you use all the time, and you're opening each of them one at a time. But if you put all of those things together into a folder, like I've done with my tech news folder here, at the bottom of the list, it's got this cool thing that says open in new tabs. And I can click one button and all of my Macintosh news websites open simultaneously. And that's one of my favorite things. But as you can see, now that we've done this work, if I open up this sidebar and we go over to the bookmark section, look how easy and clean that is. Look how quickly I can get directly into a specific web page or a specific location. But there's one more thing, and it's really cool. You see, all of this work that we've done, all this organization, a lot of people believe there's no need to organize or file things anymore because you can always search for stuff. But if you've ever been trying to find that one particular website that you know you have bookmarked from your phone, you understand the need for organization. So let's hop over to the phone and let's see how it looks now that I've done all this cleanup on the computer. I'm gonna go ahead and hop on the phone. Let's open up Safari here. And I'm gonna go down to the bottom of the page here where I've got my little bookmark icon and click it. Wow, that's nice. 
I can get right to where I need to go to so easily now. I can go right into one particular place and get right into that page that otherwise might have taken several steps to get to even though I'm on my phone. That's the real benefit of the Apple ecosystem. It's not just that they make pretty products, it's that they make pretty products that connect and synchronize and talk to each other inherently, intuitively, easily without you having to do a whole lot to make that work. So that's what I've got for today. That's our lesson. I hope you learned a ton about how to use Safari, how to use bookmarks, how to get more organized and become more effective. And if you learned something cool from this video, make sure to like and subscribe to this channel because we've got tons more tips, tricks, tutorials, and ways to use your Apple products to make you more productive and more effective with less effort. I'm Dylan Stewart. I'm the Mac Whisperer. Thank you for stopping by and I look forward to seeing you at the next video. Talk to you soon.